Building your own wheels can be a satisfying and challenging experience. And a big part of it is selecting the components so they fit and work together. This video will go over how to determine the spoke length with measurements from your hub and your rim. In order to determine spoke length, we're going to assume you already have the rim and the hub picked out that works with your bike. If you're not sure what works with your bike, consult the hub and rim manufacturers on compatibility issues. For the purposes of this video, we assume you're going to be building with the common j bend style spokes like these. Be aware when determining spoke length from scratch, it can sometimes occur that your results are less than desirable. If this occurs, it's typically because of the measurements being wrong, not the spoke length formulas. Review your numbers and calculations and re-estimate using the spoke length that you tried. Once you have your length calculated, it'll be time to lace the wheel. And that is covered in our video, How to Build a Wheel. Some typical tools you'll need when determining spoke length are a caliper for measuring such as the DC1, a spoke ruler such as the SBC1, our worksheet to record your numbers, or a great memory, to act as a rim measuring device, any two spokes and two nipples, and finally, an online spoke calculator. It is important to use the proper length spoke when building a wheel. Spokes are typically sold in one millimeter increments. Spokes that are too short or too long can result in problems. Spokes that are too short can be identified by a lot of visible thread below the nipple. This is an indication of poor thread engagement at the nipple, resulting in a weaker connection to the rim. Spokes that are too long can end up protruding way past the nipple. These spokes are likely to rub against the rim strip or rim tape and eventually cause a flat. Spoke lengths are determined by formulas that use a series of measurements. Generally, there is a one to two millimeter range of acceptable spoke length for your wheel. These measurements can be fed into online spoke calculators to run the formulas that arrive at a final spoke length. As you proceed, try to measure accurately. When using a caliper, take measurements to one tenth of a millimeter. This helps prevent measuring errors from compounding along the way. In the end, we will round to a whole number for our final spoke length. Although there are databases for rim and hub measurements, not all are up to date or accurate. In some cases, you're going to need to take your own measurements. The measurements and information you're going to need are the number of spoke holes in the hub and rim, the effective rim diameter called the ERD, hub flange diameter at the spoke holes, also known as the spoke pitch diameter, left and right hub flange spacing relative to the hub center, the desired lacing pattern, also known as the cross pattern. Let's go through each of these measurements and then how to use them in an online spoke calculator. To help you keep track of all the numbers, there's a worksheet you can download at parktool.com. You can also find it in the video description below. The first consideration for the rim is simply the number of spoke holes. Count them and make sure it is what you wanted and it matches your hub. Looking at the worksheet, record this. My wheel is a rear wheel with 32 holes. Rims are made in different diameters to fit different tire sizes. However, we're concerned with the diameter as defined by the end of what would be a correct spoke length. The common term for this is ERD for effective rim diameter. However, more accurate title would be effective spoke end diameter. This number is sometimes given by the rim manufacturer on their product page. If you have the rim on hand, it's worth measuring yourself. We are looking to measure to a point here, up inside the rim. This cutaway section shows where we want the end of the spoke to sit. We want spokes to be threaded fully into the nipple and ending about here. Having the spoke up into the nipple reinforces it and helps prevent cracking and failure at the nipple, especially aluminum nipples. 
we want the distance from the end of this boat to the same point on the opposite side. There's not a practical way to measure the ERD directly. It's going to require a couple of measurements and then some simple math. We're going to accomplish this with two J-bend spokes and nipples acting as measuring rods. Quick note, these J-bend spokes are not the spokes needed to build the wheel. These two spokes happen to measure 266 millimeters, which we got by measuring with the spoke ruler from inside the J-bend to the end of the spoke. To measure, engage the J-bend in the ruler and take the reading at the other end, 266 millimeters. Back at the rim, we see that the two do not meet in the middle, and that is just what we want. Each spoke will use a slotted nipple. This allows you to see and adjust the end of the spoke in the rim. Even if you end up building with other nipples where you cannot see the end of the spoke, the slotted nipples allow you to fine tune the ERD. Select a rim hole that is away from the valve. Engage the spoke through the hole and engage the nipple. If you intend to use rim washers, include them when measuring. Watching the slot, turn the spoke so it comes just to the bottom of the slot. This is where we want the spoke to end up on the finished wheel. Double checking you are in the opposite rim hole, repeat the process with the other spoke. Pull the spoke heads inward to seat the nipples. Using the narrow tips of the caliper jaws, Measure from inside to inside of each J-bend. Using the worksheet, I can record this number here, 35.7 millimeters. And this length to our measuring spokes. In my case, 266 plus another 266. The total of these is the ERD. For this rim, we have 567.7 millimeters. Another aspect of the rim design that needs to be accounted for is the rim offset. That's a feature of the asymmetrical rim design. To understand that, let's first look at these rims that are symmetrical that have no rim offset. This rim has spoke holes drilled straight in the middle. It is a symmetrical design and has no offset. The second example has left right left right holes staggered off the center line. The average of these is centered, so the rim is also considered symmetrical with no offset. However, this is an asymmetrical design with the holes clearly offset from the center of the rim. On a rear wheel with sprockets, the sprockets will face the side of the rim without spoke holes. However, on a front, the rotor side has the flange inset. The rotor will face the side without spoke holes. The purpose of rim offset is to help minimize the right to left side spoke tension difference. Offset is the distance from the rim center to the center of the spoke holes. Rim offset may also be listed in the manufacturer's literature. To measure rim offset, lay the rim flat on a workbench. Begin by measuring the width of the rim. This rim is 35 millimeters wide, which puts the center at 17.5 millimeters. Measure from the center of the spoke holes to the bench. Subtract this from the center of the rim. 17.5 less 13.2 equals 4.3 millimeters. This asymmetrical rim has a 4.3 millimeter offset. If your rim had no offset, simply enter zero on the worksheet. For the hub, the first number we're concerned with is simply the number of spoke holes. Count and make sure that it matches your rim. The next number we're concerned with is the diameter of a circle created by the spoke holes. Sometimes this is called flange diameter. It's not the outside that we want. It's the diameter of the circle created by the pattern of holes. Spoke pitch diameter is a better term for what we're looking for. Use a caliper and measure across opposite holes. It can be difficult to hold the caliper directly to the middle of each hole when measuring. Try hooking one jaw on the inside edge here and the second jaw aligned to the outside edge. Double check both flanges. Do not assume they are the same. Write down both the left and right dimensions on your worksheet. 
The next hub measurement we need is from each flange to the middle of the hub. This is known as the flange to center. This dimension accounts for varying flange widths as the spoke travels inward to reach the rim. Flange to center is best determined by some measurements and then some deductions. Begin by measuring the overlock nut dimension. Measure hub width where it contacts the face of the dropouts. For an open dropout or quick release hub, measure to the face of each lock nut or end cap. On a through axle hub, measure from end cap to end cap. Enter the width on the worksheet. Divide the overall hub width by two to find the center of the hub. Now, measure from the middle of the right flange to the face of the right side lock nut. Use a straight edge against the lock nut or axle end cap to make it easier. This simply extends the line of the hub cap face outward. Get your measurement on the worksheet. My hub was 49 millimeters on the right. Deduct this number from the hub center measurement. It is 18.7 from the right flange to the center of the hub. If you are measuring a through axle hub, a desk can act as a straight edge. Now repeat the process on the left flange. Routing to a tenth, this side is 35.2 millimeters from the left flange to the end cap. Deduct 35.2 from 67.7 for a flange to center dimension of 32.5. It is 32.5 millimeters from the left flange to the hub center. Many online spoke calculators have a field for the size of the spoke hole in the flange. The default is considered 2.5 millimeters, the common size. Even if your hub varies slightly from that, it won't make any significant difference in the spoke length. Spoke length is also influenced by the spoke pattern as they radiate from the hub to the rim. The shortest possible spoke goes from the hub straight up to the rim. These spokes show an example of radial lacing or zero cross. But if the spokes leave the hub at an angle, they weave across other spokes, making a cross pattern. This is where a spoke goes if we used a one cross. Two cross would end up here and so requires a bit longer spoke. A still longer spoke is needed for a three cross pattern that would end up here. This wheel is gonna be built as a three cross. So on the worksheet, I'm gonna enter three cross on both sides. Once you commit to a spoke pattern, figure out the length and then get your spokes, it's too late then to change your mind. Before entering our data in an online spoke calculator, we need to understand the difference between differential spoking and non-differential spoking when we're building a wheel. First, let's define non-differential. It is simply when the left and right sides are built with the same length spokes. Not different, non-differential. A front wheel used with rim brakes has the same flange to center measurements for both left and right sides. The spokes are then the same length for both sides. Now consider hubs with one flange inset more than the other. On a rear wheel, the drive side flange is pushed inward more than the non-drive to make room for the sprockets. The distance here from the right flange to the rim is shorter than from the left flange to the rim. When the flange to center differences begin to vary on the hub, we have the option of differential spoking, meaning it'll be different on drive and non-drive side. For example, this wheel is built with a 290 on the drive side, 292 on the non-drive side. What this gets us is ideal spoke engagement at the nipple. Differential spoking does not equal out tension left to right. However, sometimes it's just more practical to build with non-differential lengths, even when the spoke calculators call for two different lengths. Sometimes it's just cheaper to build with all the same length. It's also less confusing when you're lacing up the hub to the rim. Now, if the spoke calculator calls for one millimeter difference, drive to non-drive, go with the longer spoke. If it calls for two millimeters difference, take the average. You get to three millimeters difference between the two sides, it is worth 
getting the two different lengths. Have the figures from your worksheet ready as you select an online spoke calculator. There are several choices out there, but we're going to go with spokecalc.io. Find the link in the video description below. We have a screen with front wheel and rear wheel options. We begin with hub and the fields needed drop down. Classic here refers to JBen, and it is the default selection. Left and right side spoke pitch diameters go here. These are the flange diameters from your worksheet. For me, it was 61 millimeters for both. Going down, we have left flange to center. For my worksheet, it was 32.5 for the left side. For the right side, it was 18.7 millimeters. The spoke hole diameter we're assuming to be the common 2.5 millimeters. Next is information on the rim, and we click here to get the fields. Enter the ERD, 567.7 for me. Over here, enter any offset. My rim had 4.3 millimeters offset. If the rim doesn't have any offset, again, enter zero. You cannot leave this blank. On to lacing. There are two necessary fields. Scroll down to the number of spokes for this wheel and select, for me, 32. Now, over to the lacing pattern. Scroll down to the lacing you want. For me, three cross. For this particular website, you must accept their disclaimer. Now you can hit calculate, and then we have some numbers. For this example, we got 273.83 and 273.34 millimeters. Again, spokes are available only in whole millimeter increments. Rounding, to build this wheel with differential spoking, we would use 273 and 274 millimeters. To build only with one spoke length, we would prefer to get 274 millimeters. Those are the steps to spoke length calculation. Once you get all the components, including your spokes together, head over to our video on how to build and lace and tighten a wheel. Thanks for joining us, and remember to finish and hand in your worksheet.